Hello everybody, my uh, most sadistic friends, welcome to this short video from the uh, the new series, Hunty's World of Pain on tour. Okay, let's go. Um, so th this series is just when we, we have fun together um, as I relive uh, little episodes in my chess life of uh, following somebody down a dark alley, removing their trousers and doing unspeakably vo uh, vile and vulgar things to them um obviously you know it's chess the same happens to me on a regular basis but it's a lot more fun to share it when it's somebody else and we can all enjoy uh, vicariously that uh experience of ritual abuse so let's enjoy ourselves all right so um opponent here is uh goss bust uh, from france i believe there we go it's 1500 nod rapid um this is a 10 minute no increment so let's go and see what happens to poor old Gossbust. Um, incidentally, I have to say, Gossbust did, did not play inaccurately in this game, but the problem is very often you can play a very accurate game from a, a bad position um, and still, you know, get your ass handed to you. So we have the Karo Khan. And of course, at this point, I'm going, I'm going to mate you in nine moves with my favorite. It is my favorite trap, actually, probably my favorite trap of all. Okay. So, um, knight c3, here we go. So, expecting them to take the pawn. They don't take the pawn. Now, this is the Campomani's attack. I don't know what he means. I don't know what to do. But um, pushing the pawn, e5, any time, really, that your opponent throws a knight in front of a free pawn on the fourth rank and you can proceed and kick, generally a good thing because you're taking that, that square away from the knight anyway. Right? But we're not, we're not going to mess around on this. We're, we're gonna, let's wait for the blood to start flowing. Okay. Uh, and now I throw in f4. I thought, sod it, right? Let's go. Let's go for the throat. He's already had to spend two moves moving his knight. Okay. And like you do is like, is it Alakines? I'm not. I'm not sure. Or anyway, um, yeah. But you know, so it could be a useful defensive knight. Uh, and I, I think, come on, let's let's do this. There, there's no. The e-pawn hasn't moved, so there's no threat from the queen. Don't have to hurry to get knight out to f3. So why not push Freddy to f4 first, then put the knight behind him? Okay, now e6, and black is already starting to look a little bit folded in on himself. Okay, knight f3, and we have b5 from Gosbust. Uh, I play my bishop out to e3. I just want to make sure this pawn is very well defended. It's quite often, you know, in the Karakhan, like in the French. In fact, this is now turned into more more like a French, really, uh, in the structure. Because um, black has pushed c5 straight away. Well, no, they haven't, have they, at all? But anyway, you end up in the same kind of position. So, hey, hey. In actual fact, <clears throat> I should probably think about treating the French in a similar way to this, if I can find a way to do it. Let's see. Anyway, uh, we have knight c6 from Gospost. I bring out my bishop. I'm, I'm thinking about short castles here, uh, thinking about using Freddy as a battery ram and sacrifice the poor soul to the chess gods. He takes, I take with knight. Bishop comes out. I'm like, I ain't even bothered, right? Queen g4. And here, opponent has to think for nearly 40 seconds, right? Because he's got a problem now. He's already got a problem. Look where all his junk is, right? So he's created, he's created this pawn chain here, and all all of his stuff, apart from one rook, right, is kind of on the wrong side of the board. Okay, and what's more, these knights can't ease. I mean, yeah, he can trade his way through, but he, he can't get through unscathed. So queen coming out to g5, g4, sorry. I'm targeting this pawn now. Is he going to castle? Right? Well, I mean, I've got a sacrificial bishop that could come flying in. My queen can come across. I'm, I'm probably going to cast on myself, push Freddy up the board. So he takes the knight, blah, 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 whatever. Right? That's just a, I can't think of anything better to do move. Now I take back, and now he has to think for another minute, minute and two. And he pushes g6. Now this is a concession, and I'm happy to see it. Okay, so now what are we thinking? I'm thinking, well, we'll probably get castled. Push Freddy up, right? Because one of these pawns is going to have to move, and it's not... Whatever happens, it's not going to be great for opponent. Also notice, 
the configuration of all this stuff on the light squares, yeah? Right? That means that his... And, and he's got a light squared bishop, which, by the way, is still in the box. Right? He's, he's just given away his dark squared bishop, which is really the only piece that has got freedom of movement passed to get through this, this, I mean, honeycomb that he's made on the light squares, yeah? So, already not looking good. And one dark square in particular should now be jumping out. Yeah? Can you see it? We have a gorgeous Shekshi outpost here for, for example, a, a horse. So, um, I castle now. This is actually um, a mistake because the machine wanted me to do this to get my knight into, you guessed it, d6, outpost, can't be disturbed by an e-pawn or a c-pawn, because ain't no c-pawn, it's off the board, and the e-pawn's already moved, so if we can get a knight onto sixth, right? Anyway, um, opponent plays um, hapless victim, the opponent, plays this move, and I'm thinking, okay, right, okay, so you're looking at my pawn, get it? What I really want to do is bring my knight into here and give check, force the king to move, lose casting rights, etc. And then I go, ah, yes, you see it? Knight b5 now, it's a multi-purpose move. I defend the pawn, so I snuff out the queen's immediate ambition, and I'm still threatening to come in here with check. Ha ha, uh, it doesn't, a6, meh, makes no difference, I come in, right? Um... And he's put another pawn on the light squares. And this dark, this light square bishop must be sitting there going, "Dude, seriously, how what? How am I how am I supposed to join this game? You've put all you've got seven pawns and two knights on dark squares right in my way. All right, I may as well just go home. What's the point? Anyway, so uh, yeah, so king has to move. King moves here. I advance queen. Um, yeah, I'm fully expecting him to play f6. And yeah, it's defended by king, it's defended by knight, it doesn't matter. I want to open stuff up. But then I see, ah, I can, I can sneak around, look, how about this? How about this, even? Right? So again, he has to think, another 1 minute 19, right? He's eating his time, he's chewing through it. King has to move. And now, pretty obvious, knight f7 check, let's win a rook. He goes back, I win myself a rook. Fair enough. Black gets a, a pawn for his trouble. Seriously? Like, the, the pawn is going to save you? Okay. Not against Mr. Eat My Horse. Okay. So, I, I figure, let's grab the pawn here. And I'm not just grabbing pawns here. This, is, this pawn is not consequential. It's not meaningful to the plot. right? But the, pinning this knight is a good thing, right? Because he's got, look, one, two, three attackers. Oh, hello, four. Four attackers on this pawn that's only got one defender. So, I mean, it's not like, I'm not trying to save this pawn anyway. In fact, you know, if I could throw these pawns on the floor, I'd be perfectly happy. It's all about this. So he takes, I take, he takes. Now I pin. Okay, so now we have a knight here pinned by the queen. We have a knight here pinned by the bishop. They're both absolute pins. I can take either, well, I, I mean, I can simply capture this knight. Well, I guess queen takes back, you know. Anyway, anyway, <clears throat> king moves, and now I decide to grab this pawn. Okay, I'm attacking this knight, which is no longer pinned, by the way. All the knights are now unpinned and free to go about their business. Knight takes d3. Now, pause. Pause for thought. Do you see a potential trap that black could walk into? after we recapture the knight. Pause if you have to. Of course, black cannot, I even, I said this to him, but he's in France, he can't hear me, right? I said it to him, I said, you can't take the pawn, I said. You, I said, don't take the pawn, please, whatever you do, please, Gospust, do not take the pawn. Oh no, oh no, he took the pawn. And what do we do next? Exactly, right? Knight e7 check. Boom, and Regina mortua est. The queen is dead. King moves. We win ourselves a queen. Knight comes here. I grab bishop. 
with check. So my queen is not, you know, I'm not I'm not not in the business of blundering queens today. Not today. Usually I am. And why not another pin, right? I've got three, potentially four active pieces. He's got one that's now pinned and one other piece. So it's gonna end. This is a world of hurt now. Okay, I bring rook over. Um, now pinning the knight. He could just take me. No, he can't. He's still pinned. Still pinned by the bloody bishop. And now he's pinned on the rook as well, right? So he pushes pawn forward and queen h7. Queen h7 is now going to force the king because the only other thing is block, block. Either one gets captured. King goes back to the back rank. And now rook a to b1, right? Now more pin, more pin fun, right? This pawn is pinned, which means this pawn is not defending this knight, which means I have attacker one, two, defenders, solo. I He, he moves rook, I take the knight, and rook can't recapture. Why not? Because I, I, I take there. Pawn can't recapture because of this. Horrible, horrible. Okay, and resigns. Okay, it's, mate's going to come in four moves or so. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I know I... You know, I didn't play with massive accuracy. That you know, it was good. Uh, Eighty-nine point five in a ten-minute game. I'll take that all day long. But opponent played seventy-seven-three, which is going to be good enough to win a lot of games, a lot of games. <whistles> and I've got a two thousand. I've got a two thousand. Guess the elo. Woo! Check it out. No brilliances. One great move on my part, which is probably the knight flying in. Okay, we'll do the quickest of reviews. Um, yeah, so computer doesn't approve of this, but hey. Um, <clears throat> so I think the important thing is actually, where did opponent go wrong? And I would say this move, but this is in retrospect. I didn't really see it at the time, but seeing this absolute foam packaging he's got here on the light squares, you need your dark square bishop fool. I don't give it up. Don't give it up. Uh, that's one for any chicane fans out in the audience. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I mean, and here, what am I? Okay, it says not castle. Don't castle yet. He's, he says put, right, knight has to come in now. Knight comes in now. Okay. I guess if, you know, if, if king castles, if, he, if black castles... I, I, I was already thinking, actually, Harry H4, H5, you know? And look at these, these great bishops, right? You've got to be very, very careful when you build a pawn wall. Um, I mean, castling to this side of it, well, all your, you know, all your defenders are on the wrong side. Really, really tricky one. So this is quite a kind of... You know, I, th I think the game turned on, on positional factors here. Um, and that's a missed win. Should have played H5, eh? But... Well, it's not a missed win. Yeah. H5 is still 1.6 pawns down. Uh, but after this, it's now three, and that's the great move. Five pawns now. Um, it's an outpost. King's going to have to move. And quick, very quickly from there, everything falls apart. So, yeah, good one. Good one. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon on Hunty's World of Pain on tour.